want to take you live to the Los Angeles area. Where else? Where there's a car chase underway. We're told uh, that it hit, this pursuit has been going on for about an hour. Whoa, the guy Whoa. in the blue car is obviously the one we're watching. Let's take a listen to our Fox LA chopper, uh, Rick Dicker, who's in the air. Now heading back southbound on the 170 freeway. It appears that there's only one person inside the car, Steve. We don't know why he... Uh, he was being pursued. Perhaps uh, they lit him up for some minor traffic uh, violation that he committed down in the 405 in the Wilmington area where we believe this pursuit started. CHP is the handle on this pursuit. We're hearing that uh, he was going uh, up to 90 miles an hour or faster. It came up the 405 through West LA in through traffic and then the 405 opened up through the Sepulveda Pass because that's the northbound side, the, the uh, fast side of the 405 this time, time of day. Went up to the 118, connected with the 118 eastbound and then back on the five. Oh. He's, he's, he's driving very erratically. Now this is a good uh, opportunity for CHP units to try that uh, pit maneuver, but uh, they did not. Looks like some people have uh, pulled over to the side again against traffic here and picking up uh, speed. This is an on-ramp to the southbound 170. There you go, just in and out of traffic here. Wow. All right, back under the 170 now uh, here, Steve, underneath the 170, that's the 170 crossing over. We'll try to get this street for you. Might be back on Roscoe, actually. He is at least traveling uh, on the right side of the road here, but at a very high rate of speed. I believe it's Roscoe, uh, Steve, heading eastbound on Roscoe through the Sun Valley area. Uh, we believe about uh, at least f uh, half an hour to 40 minutes. Uh, we hear that the pursuit was picked up uh, in Wilmington. And we do not know why officers decide to uh, light this guy up. Again, perhaps it could have been just a minor traffic violation. It could have been uh, that they ran the plates and the car came back stolen. Very high rate of speed, eastbound. You've seen how erratic this guy has been driving. Sometimes law enforcement in situations like this will just pull back because of uh, the danger to, uh, to the innocent uh, motorists and pedestrians here. You can see a busy intersection here. He's going to try to cross it. He has a, a red light there. Again. Making a, a southbound turn. This may be. Uh, this In may be case you're just joining us, we're listening to Rick Dickert, who is the chopper pilot for Fox by. LA, a voice you may know because he's often the one who's in the air when these car chases are underway. Exactly we're told right. that they, uh, they uh, the uh, cops in LA have been chasing this guy for about an hour. He's in that old blue Honda. It's thought to be just one male in that car. Why are they after him? We don't know at this point. Let's continue to listen to Rick. Against traffic again, uh, heading southbound. In northbound lanes, kind of straddling, straddling that uh, that medium there. There he goes, right through the intersection, busting through against traffic. I'm not seeing many. Oh, missing a bus. Very close here. Again, a very dangerous situation. An older style uh, Honda. And I believe that some of the uh, some of the some of the CHP officers have decided to pull back at least slightly. Well, there's one one tracking him there, but. Uh, this does not look good in terms of uh, how, how it'll end. He started well to the south in the, uh, in the South Bay area, down towards Wilmington and Carson. At least that's what we heard. And that information's all preliminary. And then he came up the 405 northbound all the way through the county past LAX. And he's just driving erratically. It's, I mean, at times they will go to uh, these suspects who are being pursued, will go to neighborhoods that uh, they are familiar with. Unsure if uh, that's the case here, but Smaller side street here. Here's an opportunity. There's not a lot of traffic. Sometimes the officers will try to uh, intervene here and uh, and try to cut him off uh, or or uh, engage him in uh, in the pit maneuver and try to spin him out here. You're absolutely right, uh, Jill. I wish I could get a street here for you, but we're doing circles just like this guy. There's a couple uh, behind. It, you know, there's that small chance that they may get away, and of course, it delays the inevitable of them uh, of them going to jail. In addition to what to whatever uh, wh whatever he's being pursued for, he's you know can be written up for all of these uh, erratic uh, driving. Uh, Yeah, I was exactly very good point, Joe. A lot of times uh, they're they're right there, and uh, and it's a situation where, you know, they know that this is this is it. So they try to run if they can, but in the meantime, this guy's endangering a lot of people's lives.
and we've seen some really tragic situations and people have lost their lives, innocent people in these uh, high speed pursuits. All right, trying to get back on the freeway here. This is gonna be the five freeway now. The five southbound through Sun Valley, crossed over, look at this. He's, he's maneuvering this car quite well, I will say that. Jumping over islands, and this uh, CHP is just trying to track him. Get it, he, he wants an opportunity to try to spin him out for, uh, for that driver to lose control to bring this to an end, but you don't know what you're dealing with. This guy could have a gun. Obviously, he does not care right now in terms of how he's driving and what he's doing, and he is doing whatever he can to evade uh, these officers here. So it's very possible he could be armed. That's a very dangerous situation. These officers are doing the best they can. They're trained at this. At, at, at this time, that's all we could see inside uh, the automobile. Not, not to say there could be someone ducked in the back. I'm sorry, say again. We got, we got to think of 30 to 40 minutes because it started down in the South Bay. That's what we heard initially, uh, the 405 freeway down towards Wilmington between like the Long Beach and the Carson area. And that stretch of the 405 is heavy. So he had to weave in and out of some very slow traffic between the Torrance area up towards LAX and West Los Angeles here. Making a left turn here, he's been... Hit him, hit him. I need to find a street here. 170. Sheldon. Uh, Roscoe again. Come on, get him. Pit him, pit him. Uh, no, he doesn't. And he's got a... Roscoe, right? Oh, north. He's going northbound right here. Got him, got him, got him. He is on uh, Woodman. Maybe? No. Five. Just to let you know what you're listening to, that's Rick Dickert, who Arlita. is the Fox LA chopper. Uh, they've been following this police chafe uh, in LA County, and this is the, this old blue Honda you're sitting uh, seeing there in the middle of your screen. He's been doing some pretty crazy driving uh, and some pretty, <laughs> not only dangerous driving, but actually, as the chopper pilot said, some, I hate to say this, but pretty impressive driving. He's been wheeling that thing around, uh, evading police for the moment anyway. Uh, the California Highway Patrol is telling us that this pursuit started more than an hour ago as a failure to yield in the South Bay area near Carson, California, if you're familiar with that. And we're told, again, it's just one person in the car. It sounds like, anyway, CHP is telling us it just started as, as what they thought would be a routine traffic stop. And uh, he has not stopped yet, so we continue to watch him. And, you know, we've seen him blow by school buses and through... Uh, on the highways and then getting off, as you can see here, on the highways through some of these uh, street sides. It's, it's been pretty crazy. Wow. You know, this, this guy's a nut. Um, he really has put not only his own life, but the lives of other innocent people in danger. You mentioned the school bus. He came so close to that. He was driving into oncoming traffic uh, at some point. And it's amazing. It's very interesting to watch the police officers who were in pursuit. Uh, it seems like they're either holding back or getting closer, depending on how close they are to other traffic on the road. Here you see he's being pursued by at least two. I'm sure there are more. There's a third one coming up from the bottom of the screen in the shot here. Uh, but the police are there, and I'm sure that what they would like to do is to try to get ahead of him at some point to, to lay down those spike strips that had proved to be so successful in the past at blowing out tires and really forcing these drivers uh, to stop the vehicles. And, of course, we see so often and then once they stop, they get out of the cars and they start to make a run for it. We heard uh, Rick in the in the chopper say that there have been points where this guy's been going at least 90, and he said possibly uh, more than 90 miles an hour. Uh, it's not known what his deal is, why he's not stopping there. Uh, let's take a listen to what he's saying now, what Rick's saying. A couple saying. of uh, officers right behind him, really slowing down. We don't know how much gas this guy has, how long he's been going for. Just driving really erratically slow now. There really isn't a lot of traffic up here. I think he's just trying to figure out uh, which way he wants to go. Northbound on Arlita Avenue in Arlita, north end of the San Fernando Valley here. 
And it, exactly. He would try while it's turning. He would try to kind of clip the back of it to spin him out, Dorothy, so that he would yep. lose control. Yep. yep. And perhaps, uh, perhaps. Harris is uh, just got off the phone with police. Harris, what are they telling you? Well, I talked with both uh, Los Angeles PD, and then they referred me to CHP, California Highway Patrol. This started on North 405 Freeway. That is why the CHP is taking the lead in this. And they say this started with a possible traffic violation. You know, we've been talking about the fact that he may have run a yield sign. They weren't quite sure, but they said it would probably take something a little bit more than that, CHP. HP. Uh, what he said, though, was that you've got a single male driver in here who's been going upwards of 90 miles an hour for 45 minutes. They'll do what they need to to stop him, and it looks Harry, like they're going to yeah. be able to do that. They've got him boxed into a, a driveway right now, and unless he lives in that house, he might be out of luck, Jane. And guns drawn, they've got him. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how these things end? They all seem to end the they same way. End. They end that they get the guy, and, and sometimes after wild speeds and crazy driving, they end like that. Yeah. He just pulls over and pulls into a driveway and now they're pulling him out, it looks like. Well, one thing that the CHP officer said was that they weren't sure why oh, he ran. The like, they weren't sure what he was running from because it was a simple traffic violation in his estimation. Wow, that car is, yikes, still moving. They've got him. I, Wow, and you got to be so careful, too, because you don't know if this guy is armed. You don't know if he's on something. You don't know why he ran, and that was specifically what CHP was saying. We don't know what the deal is with this guy in the car that he would you know, try to flee a simple traffic violation stop uh, and, and take us through all of this, but they just wanted this to come to a safe conclusion. As far as we know, according to CHP, there were no uh, accidents that this guy caused. And the way he was driving, boy, that's nothing short of a miracle. It's yeah. a blessing, actually. Sure but they got him. All right, Harris, thanks uh, for letting us know what you know at this point. Again, we'll continue to get more information about why he was fleeing in the first place. She is, as Harris mentioned, it started uh, in the, what's known as the South Bay area near Carson, California, and they just a failure to yield. Probably thought they were going to pull him over pretty easily, and then he took off. So, as she said, they got him. That's they got it. him. From nice Southern job California. by the California Highway Patrol. Good <laughs> work, got gentlemen. Guy, uh, the guy, who, a driver of that blue car you see in the middle there, led them on a chase for well over an hour, reached speeds of over 90 miles an hour, some really dangerous driving. It was just a failure to yield. They tried to pull him over, and he wouldn't stop. But that's him on the ground. Up oh, Now he's up, uh, and they got him. They're taking him in. So that's the we end of that one. that uh, car chase. And uh, where else but in Southern California, Trace, where you happen to know uh, a little bit about, <laughs> lived there for many years. It's over. As always, they got him. Nothing like a good car chase, Jane. I mean, this thing went on for quite some time, and it started below Los Angeles, the south part of the city. It ended up in the San Fernando Valley. Went on for quite a while. The thing that I always, I always notice in car chases is that people tend to go back to where they're familiar, their, their home neighborhoods, because they think they can kind of outmaneuver cops. It never works. But the interesting point about all of these car chases that a lot of them have in common is these people are third strikers. In California, a three-strike law, if you go to prison for a violent crime, and the third strike, you're gone. You're done for life, which is why so many of these people decide, if I'm going away forever, I'm going to make a race of it. That guy clearly got caught. We don't know. We don't know if he's a third striker. We do know that he'll be in jail for quite some time, Jane. And yeah. by the way, coming up at the top of the hour on the live desk, the big story of the day, of course, is 